I was out in the woods cutting down a difficult tree. It was alive, but a big windstorm had tipped it over to about a 30 degree angle, so the root ball was pulling up on it, and the tree that it was hung up in was pushing down on it. So I had it going in two different directions. I knew it was going to be a challenge, so I took both saws out. I cut with this saw. Lo and behold, this saw got pinched. Thankfully, I had this saw out there with me. I went ahead and pulled the starter, and the rope broke. Ah! So I had to use an axe to get this out. But let's go ahead and take this into the shop and get this pull rope fixed. Okay. Got her on the workbench. We need to take the recoil off. That's where the pull cord comes out. And there's four Torx screws in here. Now all these screws are the same, but you want to be a little careful to watch this one. There's a little cup washer in here. And if that comes out with it, you want to keep that together. With the screws out, now we can pull this recoil starter out. And you just want to push this safety bar up here. Tip it up just a little bit and you can slide it out. There's a little lip that goes underneath that cover. And now we can set the saw aside. If your saw is real dirty in here, it's good to clean it out, use compressed air, or wipe it out. Okay, we've got a recoil out. <clears throat> Here's our broken string. Of course, your spring is all sprung, so... Just unwind it. And there's a knot right in there. I'll take a little screwdriver and try to pry that out of there. We can just slide that out. Now here's my broken cord. When I was using this saw, I noticed when I'd pull the recoil, it would bottom out often. And I knew the cord was too short, so I measured this old one. And it broke off at 24 inches. And then I've got another 6 inches, so I only have a 30 inch cord, and it should be about 36. And the other thing we want to do is pull the cord out of the handle here. Just taking a hemostat, you can use a needle nose pliers. Just pull that out. Now let's quickly take the recoil out and clean it up. We've got some old gas and a toothbrush, and that'll clean that right up. You could use a paintbrush too, It'd probably work better on this. Any kind of brush. And the nice thing about the gas is it evaporates quick. But be careful, you're not around anything flammable when you do this. And then if you have compressed air, you can blow this out. And if you don't have compressed air, just wipe it down. Okay, I just had some rope laying around and this actually calls for number four to number five rope, which is basically around 3 16 diameter. And that's what this one is. And if you didn't have any problems with your old rope, and you have it all, you can just take the old rope, measure it out with the new one, and then cut it. Well, I know mine was too short, and this measures 30 inches total. So I'm going to go actually just a little over 36 inches on this rope. And when I tie the knots at the end, I'll lose a little bit. So I'll end up with around 36 inches. Now before we install the rope, I just want to show you on the flywheel here, you can see on the inside there's notches. And that's what this starter pull locks into. See when I turn that how it flips out? So when you pull the rope, it locks in to the notch and that's what turns your flywheel to start your engine. You want to make sure if you pull this clip off to clean it or anything, you want to make sure that this clip is going in the same direction that the starter pole is. If you turn this clip around the other way, it's not going to allow the starter pull to flare out and catch one of these notches to start your engine. 
Now to install the rope, I like to start with the handle first and come through the hole over here. That rope's a little hard to push through. It's tight, so I'm going to go ahead and seal up this end. Just take a little heat, a lighter, a little fire. Heat that up. And it helps to have gloves or something, and you can just mash it together. Be careful, because it's hot. You don't want to burn yourself. But that'll lock all those loose ends together, especially if you have a nylon rope. And now we can push the rope through the handle. Actually, probably easier to pull it. And run it down through. There's a hole where that'll come right through, and then it comes through here just like we pulled it out. So you want to run your rope down through here, and then get it over into that hole. There we go. And you can kind of twist it as you go. See, it's in that hole now. You can kind of twist it as you go. See, it's popping up just a little bit when I twist it. That helps, there you go. And then you can take a hemostat. Now I've got this spring loaded, so I gotta hold this. But you can take a hemostat, or just a little screwdriver or something, grab this, and pull it through. And now we've got it pulled through on both ends. We're ready to tie our knot in this end. Just do a loop and pull it through. And then I try to pull the rope back to the end as best I can. So we're good. Lock down there. I can pull this through. And I want to make sure that's tucked down in there. Perfect. Just like that. Beautiful. And I'll tie a knot for the other end. Now if you've got a piece of equipment that has high compression or is harder to pull, like this one is, you may want to consider a different knot at the handle. What I do is make a loop and then make a knot with the loop head. Just like that, just pull it through. Pull that through like that and that thing's not gonna not gonna come through there. Pull that through. She ain't going nowhere. Okay, we're ready to wind the pulley now. What you want to do, pull your rope through all the way so the handle's in the case there. Hold the rope, and I'm going to wind the pulley clockwise from my perspective, and I'm just going to hold the rope. I'm not going to wind the rope around here. I'm winding the pulley. Hold the rope and I'm gonna go four turns to start. So there's one, two, three, and four. Stop there. I'm gonna hold the pulley here. I'm gonna pull the rope back through. And now I'm gonna hold the rope here release my left hand because I'm holding the tension and let it in and I can see that it, it's too loose so what I need to do is come back in here I'm gonna hold the pulley release tension on the rope Wind the rope another turn, pull this back out, let it in, and that's good tension for me. You don't want to overwind that pulley because what's going to happen is you're going to wear that spring out quick. Now we'll check it at the other end, 
and we're good. Another way you can check that is pull it all the way out and just make sure you can turn past that. I can turn past that. See, I've gone past. That means I'm not at the end of the spring, so I'm good. If you're pulling the rope at the end of the spring, eventually that spring's going to break. And if you find you're at the end of the spring, you're either going to have to shorten your rope a little bit or reduce the tension. Now before I put this back together, I want to put a little oil on the rotor shaft and that'll get down into the spring also. I don't want to soak it down, but just a little bit. Lubricate that. We got it all clean. Nice and smooth. Beautiful. And now we're ready to put it back together. Now we're all cleaned up, lubed up. Just going to push this guard up, slide the tongue up in there. Good. And then to lock that in, you just pull this out a little bit. Feel your way in. There you go. Beautiful. Now we can put our screws back in. I always turn these counterclockwise till I hear it click and then down. Then you know you didn't cross thread it. Here we go. I'll just get these started, leave it loose. And I like to go crisscross anytime I'm tightening something down, a cylinder head or anything like that. That's got a pattern like that. It's nice to take it in straight all at once. Good. She should be ready to go back to work now. Thank <laughs> you.